All right, guys, so now that I got all the nonsense basically figured out with this TV, I can say that it is breathtaking with the picture dialed in. It looks pretty fantastic. Now, it does have every bit as much as a reflection problem as you can typically expect from an OLED. But what I will say is that it does look pretty damn sweet. I mean, really sweet. Now, the problem, though, is the motion. That You're not getting around that unless Vizio patches that. And right now, I don't see that happening. Uh, I mean, really, I, I don't know, man. It's one of those things you're going to have to take on the chin. But just wanted to show off this uh, trailer here so you guys can at least get a general idea of what gaming is going to look like. But so far, everything that I've seen from the gaming perspective has been pretty sweet. I've watched some movies. I've watched some TV shows. So Bleach looks really good. Um, I... I used to use fairy tale for certain scenes because it would get really wonky and you would notice how there were some serious problems as far as like when the mouths move, there'd be this weird blurring and artifacting that is gone on this Vizio. So that's really good. Um, but overall, the judder is still there. So there's a bit of jerkiness to the picture. Nothing jarring that causes motion sickness or anything like that. But it's juddery. It's jittery. It's it's not smooth and it's damn sure not premium. So I think anybody looking at the 55 inch for the 1200 bucks they want for it, 1300 bucks. All right, that's fair. Whatever OLED, all that nonsense, HDMI 2.1, all the other features they're offering. Okay, but as far as the $2,000 variant for the 65 inch, hell nah. Like I would not pay that at all. Like not on your life, Vizio. Like you got a damn mind. Like, the stand alone is really trash because while the metal piece is nice, it relies on a plastic support piece, which I think is stupid. It defeats the purpose of having metal when you use plastic to reinforce the TV. I mean, literally, like, the, the plastic is holding the TV in the backing, and they didn't even add rubber to the back of the plastic, so when you need to slide the TV or move the TV, it's just this plastic scratching and scraping at your surface and it's just really crappy. Like, it's it's not nice at all, right? And, you know, I don't know. I guess I expect too much from manufacturers. I guess making luxury products actually be luxurious is, a, I guess, a really negative thing to want in 2020 because it's very clear they, they ain't doing it, right? They don't care. So, I don't know. I think, like, this is a nice TV. It's a nice... Uh, you know, OLED, I wouldn't go as far as to call it an entry-level OLED. It's definitely way better than the B-series OLED from LG as far as the picture goes. Um, as far as the ease of use, though, LG is going to take the cake every day of the week. Like, LG is not this hard to set up. It's kind of plug-and-play by comparison. This is stupid annoying to get going. You need a thin screwdriver. I mean, like, that unboxing process is a pain. Like, I'm still talking about it even though the TV's on, even though I see how beautiful the TV is, it is beautiful, yes, I don't care, right? I no longer care. And I think that is what a lot of people who are realists like me, who don't have time to waste on this, who don't have, you know, an infinite amount of energy to waste on this, I think that's going to be something that dampens it a little bit for you. Um, but as you guys are seeing, picture quality wise, yeah, it looks pretty damn dope. I love what I'm seeing here. I think it's sick. Um, would I want more out of the image quality in terms of brightness? Maybe, yeah. It, while the TV definitely does get bright, it's a very bright OLED, kind of surprisingly, and would make me think it's an LED in some scenes for sure. It's sloppy brightness, and you have to dial it down quite a bit. And by the time you do that, well, now it's pretty dim, and it's kind of what every other OLED would be like. So I think that's kind of like another thing that sucks about this TV is that it, it kind of it kind of tricks you a little bit, making you think you have usable brightness, but you don't. It doesn't, you know, get the highlights correct and get the contrast around those highlights correct. So that's something that you're going to want to think about now. So far, these are day one impressions. I have done the firmware update. It's done. I saw a lot of people talking about uh, my video where I was complaining about uh, the PlayStation and, you know, the Vizio not syncing up together. <laughs> you see, it's it's listening now. Uh, you know, and the Vizio not syncing up together properly. I think that, honestly speaking, is going to hurt a lot of people that are looking for next-gen gaming. And that's just as real as it gets. 